I want to welcome you today. Uh, my name is Betsy Peterson. I'm the director of the American Folklife Center here at the Library of Congress. And on behalf of the staff, I want to welcome you all. I'm glad you came out of the heat and into this cool auditorium for a wonderful hour of music. Our, the latest uh, concert in our um, homegrown concert series will be featuring Los Enzotles today. Uh, but to tell you a little bit about home, the Homegrown Concert Series first, it's an opportunity for the American Folklife Center to present the very best um, of music, traditional dance, narrative arts from throughout the United States. And to do that, we work with a lot of folklorists, ethnomusicologists, cultural specialists, and others to identify the very best artists, select them, and to bring them here to share their traditions with all of you. So with that said, um, I, actually I should also say, and we record these things. This is in essence kind of a, um, an open recording session that you all are able to listen into. Um, and these concerts become part of our archive and will eventually be online and webcast so people around the world can hear what you're gonna hear today. Um, so with that said now, if you have a cell phone turned on, please turn it off. We would appreciate it. Um, so our performance today, Los Sanzontles, um, which is a name in Nahuatl that means the mockingbirds. And they are a group which also runs a cultural arts academy, media production studio based in San Pablo, California. And I believe they've been there since around 1989. And they have been working to revive and promote various regional styles of Mexican music. Um, and they do it through research, performance, education, recordings, and videos. All sorts of amazing work that they've been doing over the last 20, 30 years. So to tell you a little bit more about that, I wanna bring out um, Dan Sheehy, who is the F executive director emeritus of Folkways Records and former head of the Smithsonian Center for Folklife and Cultural Heritage and one time director of the Folk Arts Program at the National Endowment for the Arts and in National Endowment <laughs> Heritage Fellow, Best Lomax Haas recipient. Um, he's extremely knowledgeable and has known Los Enzotles for a long time. So he'll tell you a little bit more about what you're going to hear. So Daniel Sheehy. I love to be with Bessie Peterson for two reasons. One thing, she says all kinds of nice things. And uh, I appreciate that, Bessie. And also because she's really one of the great leaders of our folk life, folk and traditional arts field. And it's great to have her here in Washington, D.C. at the Library of Congress. So thanks, thanks very much, Bessie. As Bessie mentioned, uh, I met the uh, Los Ensembles before they were Los Ensembles when Eugene Rodriguez, the director, and founder worked with Gilberto Gutierrez, from a man from uh, Veracruz, Mexico, who started a movement in Mexico, starting about 1977, a grassroots movement connecting elders, in most cases, with their own community because the pop culture, the media, it had sort of had sort of emerged, leaving all the rest of the culture in the shadows. And so, working with that model, Eugene in the United States, in the Bay Area, worked with Gilberto, and they started this, basically, it's kind of a movement in the Bay Area. And uh, I'll tell you in advance, it's very easy to like and to admire just about everything that Los Ensembles do. They, they get the idea that, that music, when you connect it to community, strengthens both the community and strengthens the music as well. So uh, we're pleased to have uh, five of the core members of Los Ensembles with us today, Eugene Rodriguez, his son Emiliano Rodriguez, Lucina Rodriguez, no relation, but uh, might as well be, they're kind of like family and have been for decades, and uh, Fabiana Trujillo, and the younger, the new generation coming up, Sarai Velasquez. So please welcome Los Ensembles from San Pablo, California.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Betsy. Very good friends. The best. A donde te hayas hermosísimo lucero, a quien estás iluminándole la vida, mientras que yo sin ti soy mula sin arriero, muerta de sed por los caminos de la vida. Quisiera ser aquella nube pasajera para buscarte en los lugares que me ofendes. Quisiera estar donde tú estás ahorita mismo para arrancarte de los brazos donde duermes. Tú eres el sol con que se alumbra mi existir. Tú eres el agua con que se apaga mi sed. Tú eres el aire que respiro para vivir. Tú eres la tierra donde al fin descansaré. Si me emborracho para olvidarte no te olvido porque en el fondo de mi copa te estoy viendo y desde el fondo de esa copa tú te burlas con una risa que me mata el pensamiento. Quisiera ser aquella nube pasajera para buscarte en los lugares que me ofendes Quisiera estar donde tú estás ahorita mismo para arrancarte de los brazos donde duermes. Tú eres el sol con que se alumbra mi existir. Tú eres el agua con que se apaga mi sed. Tú eres el aire que respiro para vivir. Tú eres la tierra donde al fin descansaré. Aquellos ojitos verdes con que se andarán paseando Ojalá que me recuerden aunque sea de vez en cuando Dicen que cuando suspiran aquellos ojitos verdes Me suspiran con la vida porque todavía me quieren Ay, 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 ¿dónde andarán esos ojitos que me hicieron suspirar? Ay, 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 ¿dónde estarán esos ojitos que no los puedo olvidar? Thank you. Gracias. 
So that's Fabiola Trujillo and Lucina Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, it's a great thrill for us to be here playing for you all. Uh, are all is everybody here kind of deeply into folk music or Woo! so? Okay. Well, that's great. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as Dan mentioned, Los Ensoles, I started it back in the 80s, actually in the mid-80s, and met the good people from Mono Blanco in 89. Uh, I came from a musical family. I have a couple uncles who, who were mariachi musicians. And growing up in the 60s and 70s, I always felt that was kind of an American side of me and a Mexican side of me, and I, I didn't care for that split. I, I was always uh, kind of on this path to put it all together because really... We are one human family, and I think the more that we connect with ourselves and with each other, the, but the more safe and more enriched we all are. Not to, not to take away what distinguishes us, but to recognize it and also contribute that. Uh, so I started Los Ensoles. Thank you. <laughs> so I started Los Ensoles in the late 80s, and we've worked with incredible master artists from a variety of regions. We call ourselves Sensoles because, like the mockingbird, uh, we listen to the sounds around us and try to incorporate them into our own voices. And many of the people that we've worked with, the master artists, are not really known outside of their communities. And we're going to do a piece that was composed by one of those maestros named Atilano Lopez Patricio from Jaracuara, Michoacan. He, he sings and composes in the beautiful uh, Purepacha tradition, the native traditions of Michoacan. He made my hat, too. <laughs> yeah. So as Don Atilano, um, and all, all of this music's available on YouTube if you want to find out more. So Fabiola and Lucina learned to sing in, in this beautiful language, and we're going to do one of those sones of Atilano's called Magnolita. And dancing, we have Sarai Velasquez. And on bass, Emiliano Rodriguez. Uh, you, it's quite beautiful, I think, to listen to this language. My mother says, my mother's, parent, my mother's parents were from Michoacan, and she says that her parents used certain words in Purepacha when they didn't want the kids to, to hear what they were saying, understand what they were saying. And I think um, when you listen to the language, I, I believe you can really hear the rhythms that created Mexican music, Mexican sones. The rhythms of the language, I think from that came the rhythm of the music. Um, in this tradition, there are sones, abajenos, like what we just played, there are danzas, uh, and there are pirequas, and pirequa is what we're going to play now, it's a, it's a love song. Ay, 
Thank you. Uh, as was mentioned, Los Sonles is a group. We're also a cultural arts academy and a production studio. And in fact, Fabiola and Lucina, I first met them in the mid-90s. Uh, Lucina was a 15-year-old in 1994. Uh, she wasn't going to join us until after her quinceanera, which I heard was quite nice. Uh, and she joined us, and, and these many years later, she's now our, our main music and dance teacher. And Fabiola joined, I think, maybe a year or two after that, also at age 15. And uh, she was so shy, she didn't want to tell me that she wanted to learn to sing. She said she wanted to play guitar. But she didn't seem to make any <laughs> progress on the guitar. So I said, why are you here? And I think I finally got her to say that she wanted to sing. And thank goodness she did. And now she is, uh, runs our after-school program, is our uh, ac academy uh, manager, and also singing teacher at our center. And Emiliano here, this is uh, our bass player and our production manager, does our videos and audio, happens to be my son too. He's been here, been with us for quite, quite many years. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and of course, we're very lucky to have Sarai here. Sarai is 17, and you started with us when you were seven, right? I said four yesterday, but I was wrong. And uh, she'll be going to college in, in the fall. So this is one of the last shows she'll be doing with us, and we're very, very proud. Like most of our students, she teaches um, the younger kids, and she does a wonderful, wonderful job. So we're going to do a little bolero for you guys if you're in the mood. And this is a, an old classic that we recorded on our album last year with the great uh, Flaco Jimenez and the wonderful Tex Maniacs. Um, so here it goes.
Thank you. You know, this whole process of uh, 30 years now of Los Ensontles has been a process of connection. For me personally, to connect to my own family roots, to connect to other people through music, to connect to my own family, and to connect to create family from our community. But it's also been to create connections with people from other cultures. And a couple of years ago, we had the fortune of going to Cuba. We toured Cuba with Mexican music. And Cuban people love Mexican music. Of course, Mexican people love Cuban music. And so uh, there are very few opportunities for uh, foreigners to go to Cuba and perform their music. So when, when we went to these smaller towns throughout the island, uh, we were kind of the, some of the first people. It's not that common, so people were, were coming out with curiosity to hear the music. And of course, one of the areas where the Cuban and Mexican music connect is with the bolero. And of course, they say that Cubans invented the bolero, but I like to say Mexicans perfected them. But uh, <laughs> just my opinion. That was, that was a joke. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody. It's, it's, all, it's all in the name of music. Uh, we're going to do a, a corrido for you. Visité Cuauhtla, Morelos Y por la tarde fui a la tumba de Zapata Al cementerio vi llegar a un guerrillero A un ancianito coronel de barba blanca Con tres medallas en el pecho y oxidadas Y un 30-30 enmojecido entre sus manos Llegó el anciano de figura ya encorvada para guardarse ante el sepulcro de Emiliano. Dijo en sollozos, general, hay novedades, bajo tu nombre muchos se han enriquecido, hablan bonito de tu nombre y tus ideales. Más a los tuyos los tienen en el olvido. La tierra fértil por la cual juntos luchamos la que regaste con tu sangre en Chinameca Los que vivimos sin parcela y nos quedamos Solo tenemos amarguras y pobreza Formando letras con cartuchos ya quemados Sobre la losa escribió Viva Zapata mi general, te comunico, alerta estamos, los zapatistas ha llamado de la patria. Thank you. We've also had the great fortune of working with our Huli records for who since 1994, and, and uh, Chris Rockwitz and Arhuli put out some wonderful uh, collections of corridos and Mexican music, and they're just down the street from us, really, on the same, on the same San Pablo Avenue that we are. So it's been uh, wonderful to have their, um, their support and connection throughout the years, and now the Arhuli collection is on Smithsonian Folkways. So uh, we, we made it to uh, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Actually, uh, we were here uh, in 2001 because our friend Dan Sheehy um, recommended us for an award, the President's Committee on Arts and the Humanities. Uh, and that was back in 2001. This is our first time back since, and we're very pleased and hope we'll be here again soon. Again, thank you for coming out today. So we're going to do a song. We, we also write. Lucina's a composer, and I'm a composer, and we write songs. Um, sometimes I... I um, 
I write about current events. I've been kind of shying away from that these days. I don't know what to write. I can't get my head wrapped around it. But um, this song, I, I wrote it about the uh, Latino vote and how you know, we're, uh, we're courted uh, right before elections and then after the elections, they kind of, we don't see the politicians for a while. So I wrote this song called La Pelota, The Ball. Pobrecita la pelota, ganas me dan de llorar La razón de que te agotas, es que no dejan de patear Te dicen que te quiere, antes de la jugada Pero en vez de darte un besote, la otra patada Ay, pelota, me gusta la pelota Ay, pelota, pateando la pelota Ay, pelota, queremos la pelota. Ay, pelota, pateando la pelota. Pateada por la derecha Después de que te usan A un lado te desecha Pateada por arriba Pateada por abajo Y nadie escucha Tus quejas hay carajo Ay pelota Me gusta la pelota Ay pelota Pateando la pelota Ay pelota la pelota, ay pelota, pateando la pelota. I started thinking about Lalo Guerrero during that song, how we had the great fortune of meeting Don Lalo. He was the godfather of uh, Chicano music back in 94. I was invited to produce a children's album with Los Lobos, and, and Los Insultless appeared also on that album. And Lalo's, if you don't know his music, check it out. It's, uh, it's wonderful. It's a really... Um, runs uh, many decades of uh, Mexican-American experience, and it's quite wonderful. So I brought out my little ukulele here. Nah, not really. This is a, um, a guitarra de son from Veracruz, and Lucina has her jarana, also from southern Veracruz, to play the son jarocho. What do you have there? A pandero. And... Uh, Usually they play the, the requinto, the guitarra de son that I'm playing with a piece of cow horn. We have a friend who made this out of uh, African water buffalo. It gives the music a little African flavor. <laughs> that was also a joke. <laughs> the African flavor comes in the fact that it was greatly informed by African rhythms, indigenous rhythms in Spanish, and more probably. 
So we're going to do a son jarocho for you called El Pajaroku. Traigo herida en la garganta Traigo herida en la garganta Y el corazón me dio a medio Y el corazón me dio a medio Traigo herida en la garganta Y el grito se me quebranta Y es que traigo un mal momento El pájaro cuando canta No siempre canta contento El grito se me quebranta Es que traigo un mal momento El pájaro cuando canta No siempre canta contento me está anunciando, me está anunciando que me van a dar la muerte, que me está matando. Eres mi prenda querida y yo tu pájaro, tú. arrímame tu boquita para hacer currucucú.
empieza a dar golpes en el agua, a dar golpes en el agua, cuando el pescador empieza. Salen los indios diciendo, uy le roba a Luis Cargawa, uy le roba a Luis Chachagua y esos son los que queremos. anciano con su violín con la barba blanca me dijo así esos huiles no son para mí son para mi china que lo va a freír Thank you. Real cowboys know how to put on a guitar without taking off their hat. <laughs> I haven't achieved that status. <laughs> okay, longer stuff. <clears throat> Are you enjoying the music? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great. We've, uh, as I mentioned before, worked with some wonderful folk artists, masters. Uh, Julian Gonzalez, who taught us a wonderful old-style mariachi. Uh, we did five albums with him and did a tour of Jalisco with him. Uh, created a documentary called Pasajero. You can find it online. It's very beautiful. Um, Dan Sheehy's in that, in that film, beautiful uh, interview. <laughs> that he did for us. Uh, we also made a documentary on our trip to Cuba called Conexiones, and that's being seen on various PBS stations over the next few years. Check it out, it's, it's, it's a joyful film. Very low budget, we just had one hardworking camera guy on the trip wearing flip-flops. Uh, <laughs> but he captured a real beautiful connection, you know, and, and we appreciate that. Um, we've also done a number of 
projects with uh, cross-cultural uh, nature. We were featured on uh, the Chieftains' Ry Cooter album called San Patricio. We played a few songs there and toured with the Chieftains. And um, we did a, a record with Taj Mahal and David Hidalgo exploring the connections of African-American and Mexican-American music. We did an album of, of Creole, Zydeco music. Richmond, San Pablo, where we're from, also had a great population of uh, Creole people uh, called Shades of Brown, connect, kind of a story of our neighborhood. And, uh, and Jackson Brown, and we've, we've worked with Jackson too. And this is a song um, that he and I wrote together. And we partially wrote it on Lucina's story. She came when she was 11 to this country. And it's called The Dreamer. And it's uh, dedicated for the DACA. You know who you are. <laughs> Just a child when she crossed the border To reunite with her father Who traveled north to support her So many years before She left half her family behind her And with a crucifix to remind her She pledged her future to this land and does the best that she can do. On columns of the wind, viviendo en el viento. Fish swim the currents of the sea, que libre el mar. People cross oceans and deserts and rivers, cruzamos el río, carrying nothing more than the dream of what life could be. Today she got the order They're taking steps to deport her And send her back over the border And tear her away from the life she has made We don't see half the people around us But we imagine enemies who surround us And the walls that we've built between us Keep us prisoners of our fears. Thanks so much. Again, we have Emiliano Rodriguez on bass, Lucina Rodriguez on guitars and singing and dancing, Fabiola Trujillo singing, and Sarai Velasquez. I think one of the things that's, uh, that really um, resonates with me uh, through uh, after doing these 30 years of work is just, you know, we can, we can point to a tradition somewhere across the globe or across the country and say, oh, that tradition is very valuable. We should preserve that tradition. When in fact, we all come from tradition. We all come from culture. 
And all culture is, is, is valuable. And whatever we grow up with in our home has great value. And, and it's really what, what you know, begins the education for any child. And I think the work of Los Ensembles has been that, to, to see the value in, in things that people don't see value in, whether it's culture or whether it's the children themselves. We, 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 come, we are in a working class community where there's a great deal of neglect uh, uh, for our children. But I think the work of Los Ensembles, again, all that we've done in the last 30 years has been done by young people from our neighborhood. And, and I think they um, prove that our kids are not only capable, but they're excellent. So I'd like to give a, hand, a round of applause to the, the young people of Los Ensembles. We're going to do a, a little ranchera here, kind of an anthem of Mexican-American pride called Mexico Americano. Madre, yo soy mexicano, por destino soy americano, yo soy de la raza de oro, yo soy México americano. Yo te comprendo el inglés, también te amo. song for you and I really want to thank you I want to thank Betsy Peterson for having us out I want to thank Dan Sheehy for being here today and saying kind things about us I want to thank the Library of Congress and the Folklore Society American Folk Society Mer American Folk Life Center and the Kennedy Center for having us last night it's been a wonderful trip we hope to come back um, we would love to say in a hi and meet everybody after the show but we can't, we have to run to the airport. We literally have to run to the airport <laughs> like that. Um, but we thank you uh, right now, personally, for coming. And we're gonna close with a son abaqueño from the mariachi tradition, but we'll do it in a little bit of a different style. We don't have our fiddlers here. And uh, this is a version we did on our American Horizon record with Taj Mahal and David Hidalgo. It's called El Tecolote, the owl.
buscando El colote que haces ahí Sentado en esa pared De colote que haces ahí Sentado en esa pared Esperando a mi tecolota, esperando a mi tecolota que me traiga de comer, que me traiga de comer. Te curú y cuí, cuí, te curú y cuí, cuí, te curú y cuí, cuí. Esperando a mi tecolota que me traiga de comer. de la fantasía de colote de guardiana sueño de la fantasía para que vuelas de noche para que vuelas de noche teniendo por tuyo el día teniendo por tuyo el día de curú y cuí cuí de curú y cuí cuí de curú y cuí cuí para que vuelas de noche Teniendo por tuyo el día Muchas gracias, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Thank you.